the surprises of the game. They're hot. Are the game. So 10. Hot surprises. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. Okay. So. uh <laughs> they they nailed the ending by making it all make sense. Uh, that's good shit. Yeah. So there are a lot of spinning plates that were going places that I'm like, what? You can't. So this email says 13 Sentinels details you may have missed. I'm sure you'll get a lot of this coming in from uh, Metroid Prime Rib. Good name. Um. You might, you'll get a lot of these, but here's some interesting facts you might have missed. I'm fairly certain at least Wooly missed. Oh, you're fairly certain. All right, let's find mm -hmm. out. One, in Mura's story, Chihiro makes a dent in the foundation of the Karabe House in 1945. When Mura is introduced in the Karabe House in 85, he notes the dent is missing. It's an early clue about sectors. Yes. In fact, I believe I said this directly when it became an entry. So I knew that, and that's the point the goofiest thing for me that happened after i already had completely figured sectors out okay interesting like because the order that i played in that was late that was okay. super late now the weird thing about this game to you though or at least your style of figuring things out is that you're the scatter shot plot gun approach of guessing a million things means that like, one of them lands and the others all miss. And then you go there. And then you do it again. I became highly suspicious of the entire time travel conceit mm -hmm. once uh, you played through Mira section and the destruction of 1944 doesn't affect anything in the future. That's a really good clue, for example. Yes. That, that, when right. I saw that, I was like, Oh, um, mm. more, uh, 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 yeah. So that's that's a big one for me. I remember I was just and to this and to today I still am yelling about the graphic of the clock going backwards when you switch sectors. I'm like, fuck mm. you, you liars! That is a lie. Stop showing me a clock spinning backwards. That is not there for any reason other than to lie to the player. Um, so fucking bullshit. That goddamn little stupid clock. Uh, the, the moment that I, I, I made the, the, the connection with the, the time travel was when I had filled up about half of the total events. And I was like, oh man, 2188's the first one. Ha ha ha. That's crazy because we keep going back in time, but then 1945 breaks the rules. Mm -hmm. Sorry, 1944 breaks the rules, and then I'm like looking at it, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, and none of the events were concurrent. Like mm -hmm. there was no overlap, and I'm like, and the the timing, and they're all the same ages, and I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this acting. See like these are just locations. I think I spent most of the game thinking that they were in uh a, uh divided sectors that were floating in a space station in orbit of Earth. Like I thought they were I thought they were in pods very like yeah, but it would it was a new planet, it just wasn't Earth. So yeah, because I, I remember like there was there, like that point with Natsuno Minami's story comes up, but then it keeps like cutting back to the logs, and in the log where um, Mura eighty eight describes the sectors as almost ready, like the fourth yeah. one, that mm -hmm. that tricks you into thinking that things are in sync with yeah. the with the with the current game you're playing. The way he Part says that sentence, that, like the the real versions of these characters would be outside of the events that are taking place as adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, certainly, you know. Um, but that line leads le leads you down a path of thinking like, okay, these could be simultaneous, and now you're getting all caught worked up in that idea and what that could mean and stuff, you know. 
um, because you taught the the errors are fake. I was also yelling at the game's log screens for not dividing or subdividing it, uh, it, it with enough information because I was like, now that you t now that we know about loops, fuck you, tell me what loop we're looking at on this fucking flashback. It, it, and, uh, then and then it, you, after you beat the game. After you beat the game. And not only does it tell you that, it divides it by sub-character as well, not just the playable list. Because I was also really like, damn it, I want to sort by Okino. You know? Yeah. But I can only sort by playable characters. And then they do it at the end, thankfully. You know? But all of that was just like completely like, oh my god, this is painful um, up front. Because a bunch of 2188 scenes are hidden in memories of other scenes someone yeah. watching a log on bj is not an, a unique scene from 2188 it's a scene within another one and you have to remember where that was to go find it you know i i have to say that um i i basically just want to talk about the ending it's the only part that like right like okay the, there's some other things here in this email uh though Oh, the, right. I forgot we were reading email. Sorry, I'm just thinking about... They're going to think about um, 13 Sentinel. In one of the 80, 2188 scenes, oh. Mura 88 refers to the frontline receding. At this point in the story, it would seem that it's likely a reference to the kaiju, but what he's actually talking about is the nanomachine incident in the 2180s. Nanomachines emulating a virus to extreme degrees, propagating like COVID would, meaning the fall was fast and brutal. In the final days are the small details we get referred to as a deeply nihilistic and horrific end to the human race. When Mira talks about the front line, he's probably referring to the borders of what humanity managed to quarantine before the end. Right. Yeah. Uh, the last surviving oh, the human... Through the, the U.S. border, you know, what have you. Yeah, and I mean, it, like, the log of um, uh, Yuki arri 88 arriving is like, I was on the last ship. Like and also like it also even gives you a little a little smidgen of like that it kind of does make sense that every character in the game would be from one country because this would happen to be the one country and it's an island nation Japan that would be like the safest for the longest if they shut everything down. Yeah. So Nano Machine Apocalypse doesn't necessarily turn the world into Metal Gear Survive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, last surviving human was Ryoko Shinonome. In her one log, um, in the last remaining incident, we are left to imagine what the incident was, but clearly left Ryoko in a very bad mood. So the interview with uh, George does cover that. So yes, we covered that yeah, in the ending as well. Last human. Um, yes. Uh, the ex Sekigahara kills Morimura, and that explosion causes the meeting between Ogata and the rest of them to go sour which ends up at gunfight. It's so almost but everybody on the fucking thing is dead. The craziness of that gunfight, though, is that, like, so Ogata shows up with his dudes uh, armed, which was the mistake, right? They stated. Yeah. But um, it says, so, he, and then once uh, Okino goes down, Hijiyama just goes into blood drunk mode, and that makes yeah. perfect sense. But, like, is Juro shot Okino first? And that's the part that makes so much little that makes no sense to me because Juro eighty eight appeared to be a good person beyond being is, in love with Mura uh, Morimura. So why would he shoot uh, Okino first? Listen, you know? so it, the the timeline of events in eighty eight are almost like immaterial. All that we really need to know is that they all fucked up and they're all morons. Yeah, it escalated, and the, adult, and the end of humanity was pathetic. Yeah characters uh ruined every single step of the way it was um, the most human thing ever that like the final survivors of humanity just f fell into a fucking mon monkey yeah. tribe murder you know um uh the george kamatami uh, interview describes that the whole the whole genesis of the game is because ito would not kill himself with shinonome yes exactly and she's like, I can't believe he would betray me like this, which, yeah. which feeds into her like obsessiveness with him. Exactly. And thus she sabotages uh, the fucking pro the arc project. That is the uh, darkest fucking 
motivator for making humanity suffer forever that yeah. I like holy fuck the darkness that you feel in that moment where it's like I won't even end it with you kind of thing um what's interesting is that it states that she was the last surviving human therefore maybe she killed Ada. yeah <laughs> he she said Ada for sure. he said fuck off and she did it anyway you yeah. know um uh, and that results uh -oh. in a calculation of approximately uh, 4,500 dead babies per planet that get seeded. At least. Before the... By on before average, the, at least. For this, for the, before the loops are up. Yeah. So, I'm um, thinking about this. Two other little things, sorry. Well, just universal control is... Right now. You're a what? Apparently, I'm a garbled mess right now. Yeah, your voice is getting um, killed by um, Discord. Uh, oh, well. Sorry, man. It's coming through just fine on Audacity. Uh, UC is a similar uh, to the Black Iron Prison in the Philip K. Dick novel, uh, Vallis. It's described as a place where everyone who ever lived was literally surrounded by the iron walls of the prison. Uh, they were inside of it and none of them knew it. Okay. And Tijiyama is fond of Yakisoba Pond because he was originally supposed to be fond of just noodles, but they needed a model for something he could hold in one hand. Yes, this too. I We read the interview, so anything coming from the interview, we know. So thank you. Uh, that's fine. Um, I did already catch most of that. So uh, when when the conclusion comes out, you like the... the at the end of the LP, I we pull up the interview and we read through the whole thing. So uh, we address all of that. So uh, thank you. Anyway. So, like, the game does something so smart where it, first of all, the mostly the character, the game lies to you a couple, a couple times. The clock is probably the worst one. The characters are the ones who are doing most of the lies, and they don't even lie on purpose. Nope. They, like, lie based on their own stupid assumptions. And the limits of their knowledge. Right. Yeah. So time travel, of course. And it's like, it's not until someone says time travel to somebody who knows better. Mm -hmm. Who goes, what? That's fucking stupid. There's no time travel. You what never you trust about? Natsuno, though. Because she, you, you can see her fanficking in the beginning way too hard. Oh, she's an idiot. Completely unreliable. Oh, yeah. 100%. So the, the big fear that I have with something like this, and... Almost any sci-fi story, in in my opinion, since The Matrix, but I mean before that, it was it was a dream. Is terrified of the, it was just a dream. It was all simulation. Yes. Terrified. Yes. And they did something really great with it, where the the you you are supposed to time travel's not real. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so then I think the natural ex, uh, understanding is then that the sectors are pods or, or orbit or something because they talk about stuff that's in orbit of the planet it's the satellite mm -hmm. and so it is to be understood that they're colonies something right and then comes also time travel is too ridiculous of a concept but yeah like let's keep it within the grounded basics of technology like teleportation right <laughs> And it's like, okay. And then you're like, teleportation is pretty crazy too. And it's like, oh, well, hold on a minute. So, okay, they're in orbit. And then you're like, okay, then you do around the world in 30 kilometers. In which, okay, no, hey, there you go. They're small. They're very, very small areas. There's a reason why the, like, the kaiju aren't attacking the U.S. They're always attacking fucking Tokyo or whatever, right? Okay, fine. And there's a detail in Around the World in 30 Kilometers that I didn't pick up on at all. And I feel stupid for not picking up on it. And it's the edge of the city yeah. isn't a sealed bulkhead. No. It is it's a computer of data and computers that then wipes your mind and tells you what you need to think. But what I mean is like when, when, uh, when they get to the, the fucking edge... Yeah, and it's literally all those. It's a pillars. server room, as opposed to a dome and an edge and, and the rest of the world. Yeah, and it goes 
forever. And I'm like, is this open to space? Like, what the, mm -hmm. what the fuck? Mm -hmm. This design makes no sense. It's like, oh, because it's not a real fucking location. And then the smart thing that they do is they've recontextualized the kaiju threat. They have, they have removed civilian death as a problem, which was really weird. Mm -hmm. Like, like really only these characters even exist mm -hmm. and then they reestablish it at, over and over and over and then go okay but you're still all gonna die if you don't fix this problem mm -hmm. and by the time you get there you have become attached to these characters and whether or not the kaiju are real even doesn't matter because they're all gonna die if you don't fix it mm -hmm. i I remember like looking at the city limits issue and and like wondering if it was just like a like a mass of like um like if if the if the cities were like technically buried in walls of tech inside of the ship or something like that you know like my brain was just like look you don't know it could be that whatever move along right at a certain point you can't answer these questions. You just have to put them aside and keep moving forward, which is something the game gets really good at training you to do is going, I've made an assumption. That assumption no longer works with what this person just said, but I don't have anything to replace it with. So I'm going to put this idea in limbo. Yeah. And, and they, they... The, the, the thing looking back on it that I find to be the, um, amazing, but equally like kind of goofy in retrospect is it's like you said the th the it was all a dream is one of the worst and scariest things you can do to your story because nothing has consequence right and in this particular count the context not only did it have the ultimate consequence um you had been preparing for this kind of head fuck in a way but when mm. they got to it when they hinted at it with okino and hijiyama I that was the last break you saw us have on stream where I was like yeah. I can't handle the none of this is real right now because there's too many vectors of how it is real playing out <laughs> that we're worried about yeah. Um, yeah and I I remember thinking back to when we talked about 13 Sentinels the last time on the podcast and it was not a spoiler and I accidentally figured out a huge portion of the story because I said, if Goto is being teleported into the goddamn robot and he loses all of his clothes, why does he still have his fucking glasses on? And the answer is, is he doesn't because it's not fucking real. Sure. Uh, the, the concern of like in the end it's fake so none of this matters they find mm -hmm. they make it so that it's like well no it does matter because the interconnected relationships were real also the stakes go from kaiju are attacking earth and they're going to destroy all humanity mm -hmm. and then the stakes then become smaller but more dire which is like dude there are like fucking 10 people left ever Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. gonna fix this fucking bullshit like and then it's game over for everyone ever the fucking credits roll and with you still going hold on why did morimura think this was the last loop it what was the detail and then you go looking down all the final logs that open up and you get to the one about the replicator in the in the pod and it says the lifetime is meant to last 5000 uh uh 5000 years i believe or 5000 loops or something like that i forget the exact special thing but then you look at it and you do some quick math and you go oh fucking hell they're already at 4800 of 5000 this is about to wrap up yeah. Like 5,000 years was almost spent entirely with loops and loops and like loops and loops. It's, it's, These were the last nano machine babies that could have made it out. Yeah. And, and you're looking at it and you're like, oh man, we've made like no progress on this problem. Like this has repeated almost identically over and over. 
Because everyone involved would have to, in 16 years, get up to speed and, like, carry forth the data that would prepare them for, like, all eventualities and then fight through what is essentially impossible. When Okino hits a point where she goes, uh, where he goes, um, we've lost. Statistically, it's over. And he's like, I'm not going to tell anybody. Like, you still need that to occur and line up the way it does and have a number of people who don't fully know what's going on consent to them dying but converting their brains to digital backup modes that can then show up and kind of inform you on what they were able to crack in the meantime. Like, the level of... Like, the state of this pod where only four people were around to help explain things at the last second is, like, so fucking dire for 5,000 years. So it 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 brings me to the ending, which I think is, like, a, a fucking triumph. Games do really badly with their endings. Really badly. Games almost always do badly with their endings. And when you have a, a fucking ending that is this convoluted... I was kind of scared getting to the end that of course. there's a lot of places they got to sit down. And they do something I have... N- I, I don't want to say I've never seen it, but I feel like it's the first time I've ever seen it. And they take the character who was absolutely the worst person in the story by every metric, so at fault for almost every scenario... And actually successfully go, man, he was the coolest guy. What they do with Juro from the prior loop yeah, is so astonishing. I went through it in my head. You get to the end of this story and he actually for real did nothing wrong. And it's incredible. This well- dude was shooting children in the face. Yes. And it's okay, because they fixed the consequences of it. They they fixed it, but his goal and his determination to do that was still the bad thing to do. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. As with Baby Mura, as with Ida, as with... um. Uh, uh, everyone that that state that came over from Sector Zero, they all had their own like motivations to do what they were doing, and they were misguided, but they were still doing the wrong thing. So here's the thing: I really, really went through all the four two six events mm-hmm. because the game sweeps it and like he ends up being like the hero that saved the world by the end and multiple characters are like we wouldn't have been able to get here without 426 and you know, I'm like okay hold on let's check let's check because I remember one of the earliest flashbacks in the game is him walk- walking up to a bunch of teenagers and blowing them away sure did okay step one we have we saw the end of the world. We gotta save it. We're gonna go cyberdyne it in Terminator 2. We're gonna kill all these people at the factory at the fucking right? But all okay. the innocent people, totally worth it. Moving on. Right. They weren't real. None of those were real people. Right. They were not actual people. Okay. Moving on. Step two. Okay, I figured out it's the interlocitor. How do I solve it? I'm going to shoot all these kids. Yep. I'm going to shoot them all. Okay. Because the intervention of 426 with the meta chips and all the shit that happens in the, the, in the game mm-hmm. are the only reason that they succeeded, mm-hmm. those people were all going to die for sure. No matter what. Y- without and his hand. If, and yeah. if he had managed to shoot all of them yeah it may have actually solved the problem how at least from his perspective it would have no it would have ended the loop and it would have been done and and he would have just started over but like those no 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 no. it would have been done that was the final loop five thousand we're done we're out of here we got 300 loops our time is up 
His, no, no, I know. The one... But what I'm saying is coming oh, into the, ex- the one, yeah. the loop immediately okay. afterwards. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Now, what's interesting, too, is that him fucking up uh, and then Morimura shows up and then takes him out and then they jump forward a loop and he's like backed up to the last moment before that went down. So he's like, I don't know why or how I failed, but if I'm here, I did. So that doesn't work anymore. So what else are we doing now? You know? Yeah, okay. Uh, just uh, fuck them nano machines up. Like, di- like create a, a virus that, that breaks the nano machines. Like, would that have worked? I don't know. Right? Like it, it fucks Shinonome up really bad, mm-hmm. right? But it does create the basis for the meta chip system. Now here's which a ver- is the ultimate victory, which you needed. You needed the gamification of the quote unquote meta chips uh, 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 to 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 succeed. Yes. Did he have to act like such a chode in cat and cuta form? <laughs> Was there a reason? Everyone's saying everyone's saying that D Ida made four two six DD four two six. I was one hundred percent certain that it was actually Juro four two six. Juro made DD four two six. Ida used it. Okay, there it is. Um, and then later on, Ida after Ida uses it, and and then they have a scene where um. Goto sees the flashback or the the the, the logs, and then o- Okino's like, "Whoa, transferring brains with nano machines! I didn't even know you could do that." And Ito's like, "Do do 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 do, chilling." Uh, anyway, um, did four two six need to be such a penis when he was a cat or as a best no. friend? Tyler Durden and cat mode Ida uh, of fucking four two six were dicks. I think, I think, like, he's obviously very tired, so I understand that, right? And him stuck in his own clone's brain must be very weird and frustrating. Um, but I think a dramatic amount of frustration could have been solved if he told Megami that he was actually putting the right memories into Juro. <laughs> like, yeah, he makes... He never mm-hmm. actually confirms it or, mm-hmm. like, it's does anything other than be a snide asshole. Mm-hmm. Second part of this, too, which leads to another thing, is um, the game wants you to be confused by the fact that Juro Kurabe has a true identity of Juro Izumi, but Juro Izumi has more than one meaning, and we're not going to tell you what that is. So which Juro Izumi are we talking about here? The fuck you p- so this is what it is. When you get to the conclusion and you see the results and you get out of the maze, it's like a glorious horizon. It's a new future. Everything was w- worth it in the end. Yay. Right? But when you look back at the maze that they made you crawl through, it looks so stupid to see how many world revelations occurred on the way to the final one. Oh yeah, because it was can, still a virtual every, yeah. headset in a in a pod, yeah. but you had to go through all these stop gaps of fake re- reality oh, yeah. that you. It's just silly to look back in hindsight and go, "Why just keep stopping me?" Because the game had to last a long time. <laughs> I think, like one of the first things I saw once I opened myself up to the spoilers and the memes was one was, "Oops, all Chihiro Morimura." And like a breakfast cereal, yep. Like oops, cookies. And then the second one was the SpongeBob thing of like, he's Juro Izumi, he's Juro Izumi, he's Juro Izumi, I'm Juro Izumi. Who else? And then it just it's the fucking cat going out. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so so you you gotta look. I'm like the whole, I'm definitely looking at things where I'm like, like the attitude and callousness that uh fluffy displays at times you know i'm like I, I when i see his personality shift back into adult tired juro who's like talking to ogata on the train going hey man i seen some shit 
trust me, this is what we got to do. And I'm like, Dude, that's the person I believe in because I see that guy and I know he thinks he's doing the right thing, but he's fucking worn down by what he had to do to get there. And yeah, it, switching it, back to like, real. yeah, switching back to the, the like the plotting fingers of Kuda Shiba and the plotting paws of, of Fluffy with their like laughing at your suffering kind of moments. And I go, but that's yeah. not what the grown Juro would be doing here. Oh, he's tired, dude. I guess. So tired. I guess. Um, I don't uh, even want to go down this road with you, but we're going to do it anyway because we have to. I remember the way this ended with fucking Koichi, and I don't want to have it happen the same way again. But there are two... It's true love healthy relationships in this entire fucking video game and the rest of them are horrifying and toxic and start maybe even start out okay but get into some weird shit where boundaries get crossed the it's only relate the only relationships where boundaries are respected are ogata and fucking tomi and at the yeah. end mura and natsuno minami right every other relationship involves crossing someone's personal boundaries and not respecting their wishes. And in the end, it well, works yeah, out, but I what the up, fuck? Up on his penis. Say again? How gay he was? <laughs> there was no problem with the Okino and Hijiyama route until Okino strapped him in to a brain-reading BDSM torture sesh. Yeah. That was the moment I had a problem. Because That's he really... did not want to be there and do that. And Okino was taunting him while reading his brain. That's fucked there's, up. There's a, real, there's a really, really fucked up part of that. And you can argue a certain point that I'm going to point out and then not argue. He because... liked it, but did not consent to that. He The that... fact that he was like exposing what he liked... While going, I can see that you like this, and he's like, "Oh, please stop!" That that that's fucking crazy. It's it's really because like you, I need to see what's on the screen because I feel like the screen is just showing the giant all caps top to the ceiling to the floor boners. Uh I feel so, is an asshole. No, I and feel I like. I think the story, I don't think the story goes out of its way to tell you that Okino is not an asshole. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely doesn't. Uh like I think it's 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 um that you if you look at the screen, it's Okino uh dressed up as um what you call it? Uh, the 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 cover, uh, Kiriko, Kiriko Doji with a giant yaki soba pond between the legs. I think that's what's going down yeah. there. Um, so like that uh, relationship saw... is fucked, even though it has a perfectly healthy basis to start. It goes down some fucking dark territory, and there, then you take a step. Really... Uh, no, sorry, after you, after you, after you. Then I you take a... a step to the right, and you get um. He still loves me somewhere deep down, so I'm going to stalk him and feed him until he sees the truth. And in the end, he's like, I'm not the same guy, but I still can remember the feeling, so I guess this will work. And that's fine, you get your happy ending. But stalking your fucking ex and never saying no is totally okay. And I had to sit next to Reggie, who justified every fucking... Megumi John Wick moment because Wait she was she was feeding him and because Wait. she was feeding him it was okay. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to I want to go back to Okino for a second. Sure. Before we get to Megumi. Okino, there's a lot of fate and like genealogy and like who your your upbringing shit in this. Chihiro Morimura original is a fucking manipulative bitch that destroys the human race. 
like straight up. She is awful. And she thinks she, she's so much smarter than everybody else. She also right? brought back a leering super villain that is okay that is Ogata's dad. <laughs> right. Okino is abs despite not being raised by her at all, is absolutely his mother's uh, mother's son. Cause he is a manipulative fuck. He is well, emotionally manipulative. To her to her defense though, um Mori eighty eight doesn't want to come back to life just to be alive. She wants to come back to life because they need somebody who can who knows what's going on. In her She's... anti-defense, Mori 88 killed Earth. Yes. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. She gets she doesn't get right. best, this is why at the end I said Hey, um, if any of you want to be let out of the fucking virtual world you're in, we can consider it. We'll just put you in a fake world and see how you behave there for a bit. And if we can trust you, then we'll let you out on... on... Yeah. yeah. It's parole board. We'll let you out on bail after seeing how you react in another world. Anyway. Uh, you know, is consistently like emotionally manipulative. Like the, the strapping uh, Hijama down... So he can play with his penis and convince him that he's gay or whatever. That is a hundred percent consistent with the way he has acted, like the whole way. He dresses in drag specifically. He dresses Batiste. in drag on different days to mess with Hijiyama. He totally uh, fucks with him with the 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 confession that is a cover for like a secret plan. Like he's always fucking with them. That is actually not a very healthy relationship. And I saw somebody talking about how upset they were that. Uh, the one, like, gay relationship just didn't really go anywhere in the five years in the epilogue. And it's like, that relationship started off really fucked up. And, in a really fucked up place. And one of those guys is from 1940s Japan. So, so it kind of makes sense that... Well, the teasing... The teasing the and, the, and, the, and the dynamic they have as uh, Seme and Uke, to use the terms, yeah. is totally fine when you case the manly one <gasps> when you picture it like you can picture it playing out in a way where that's how it kind of goes and Hijiyama will blush off indefinitely but at some point like uh Okino has to kind of like grab him and go like all right man come here we're doing this you know and that's sort of what the ending implies by going god you don't even know how to go on a date with someone properly come here right and as long as okino comes true with his feelings there they can totally have a relationship that works it's just that you can't get over the fucking violation of someone's brain <laughs> you can't <laughs> well i mean okino was also totally cool with throwing fucking juro and Nenji in there yeah like, yeah 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 too too like, true, true. so so that i'm looking at that relationship going we're gonna keep running this until you fucking find it or you die. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Um, and I remember I was trying to figure out, like, I'm like, who told Okino all this shit? And I was like, no, Okino's just that smart. Like, there yeah, was like, just the figured it out on the way. You know, in in one loop, got as far as he did. So, proof props on that. Uh, so you sit next to Reggie, who defends uh, Megami John Wicking all over the planet. Because she's and, feeding Juro. And defends the stalker like I'm in your house living with you even though you don't want it behavior. Because according to Reggie, as long as someone feeds you and cooks you dinner, she can fucking be as abusive and awful as she needs to be. It doesn't matter. Right. Well, Food though. I have a counter argument for that. One, Megami is shooting all those people because a cat told her that they were witches. <laughs> and if she does it, her true love will come back. <laughs> From her perspective. <laughs> her like, motive. Oh. Right. I. <laughs> I think the, like I, I am gonna I am gonna meet you on like level reasonable ground, but before that I wanna say 
one of the things about Megami's story that is wild, it might be the wildest thing in the whole game, is how late she questions what's going on in her own storyline. Oh, yeah. She shoots like five people before she goes, wait, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Is this even working? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like... And, then, and then you have a con confront yourself scene to kind of, I guess they didn't want to animate a persona moment, you know, where she shoots yeah. herself. But, like, uh, she has to get through the entire cast in um, what I would describe as Reaper's ult. <laughs> Clearing the area. Shooting everybody. And then she goes, wait, what? One thing. Okay. It's true love. And that cat's going to bring her true love back. So she's got to do it. Now, two. She is cooking for him. That's nice. Gunslinger. Uh, much more... Much more importantly than that, fucking Juro's grandma totally signs off on it. Yes, Tamau is a good person who recognizes that this relationship was based on something that was real, and she feels sorry for her and allows it to happen. Totally. Like, she gets, she gets explicit, um, not permission, but she gets explicit, like, uh, acceptance of the plan or mm -hmm. whatever to mm -hmm. him and by his direct direct blood relative you know fake, uh, but his fake, guardian fake grandma that is though <laughs> or whatever his guardian right yeah, yeah and the owner of the house like juro thinks that she stalked him and moved in like she's actually a real tenant of that house mm -hmm. juro just doesn't know it also it, it feels weird juro Oh, what feels worse? No, finish your point. Finish your point. Also, Juro does like her. Yes, deep down. And, in and his memories. Not for not for real, though. It, and she knows it. And the grandma knows it. But he's all fucked up because of the murder memories. Yes. And the... And like, the and, horribly fucked up from the, the murder new, memories. The new Juro the hard. new Juro doesn't, but the old Juro does. The old personality does, the new Juro doesn't. But it still requires her to go above and beyond him saying no, him saying stop it, and him getting straight up outright mad at her and running away from her in school because she won't leave him alone. Like, his way of displaying, uh, Karabe's way of displaying his disinterest is, is, is visibly like... Uh, 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 enacted, you know? And she persists nonetheless because, nah, the true love, though, and in the end, it oh, works here's, out here's, fine. She, uh, it's it's complicated because he's getting away from her not because he doesn't want to be around her, but he's scared something will happen. Right? Right. He actually does like her, like, for real. Mm -hmm. Deep, he, he does have, again, the residue of the of the feelings is there, and, like, it's enough to make that ending be like, yeah, you know what? This was her the whole time, so this does make sense. Um, but, like, her steamrolling past what appear to be someone's wishes of rejection on the way, I still am like, that's a, like, there was many points at which the backing off point should have occurred here. But, and, okay, it's not, it's not residue. Even current personality Juro Karabe does like her. So does prior personality Juro Izumi. Like, that is established. No, he says, no, the final scene says that he has memories of being in love with her and he still feels those things. Yes, and that cancels out the fucking, um, what do you call it? the the murder memories but at the start of the story he does like her and is afraid of hurting her but he doesn't have those battle memories yet those are being inserted over the course of megami and karabe's story that's why he's not seeing them some but, of those tapes are not juro izumi prior loop no They're some of them are are the 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 uh yeah no no he's he's getting them all back but but <laughs> What I'm saying, though, is that, like, it still has uh, a point that, again, it's it's a story, so there's only so much that you can, like, expect things to, 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 to play out, like, in a um, 
quote unquote healthy way or whatever. But like, there's the point at which if someone is going through that and there's parts of this that are like involuntary in that way, you still do have to respect what they're asking you to do while trying to support them coming back to who they are or finding the truth in a way. I, I, I'm not going to see like him asking her to leave him alone and multiple times being like, oh God, here she is again. Oh God, what is this? And her kind of barging into his life and doing this in this way where no, but the cat said we'll get back together though as stepping over a boundary, even if at the moment that boundary is is based on confusion. Okay, so... And that links to... That links to right, the no, same no, thing happening No, with... we're not moving. Okay, all right. Like, you're, like, this person is trying to fix a problem with her old boyfriend, right? Megami is trying to fix the memory problems with her old boyfriend, yes? From well, 426, the DD-426. Right. Yes. Well, she she's doing what she thinks will will cause that to happen. She has been given explicit confirmation from the person who is his guardian and created his new personality that this is cool and that she lives there now. Morimura, Morimura, Morimura tells him tells her don't talk about the previous personality. Let yeah, him be. But, but Tamau is the person who actually created his fucking new personality. Okay, but Tamau in this instance is like, you're, well, you're talking about the. Uh, wait, hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. Tamau in the loop is just the is is just the the Granny Tamau version that ends up not existing because of the redundancy of the other Tamau coming. But that person is not the person who creates that personality. The personality comes from uh, uh, when uh, Morimura and Ida are are there plotting about the whole thing. That's not true. Tamau is the the robot. Tamau is absolutely the one who has the fucking Tamau character from eighty eights fucking shit and fixes the personality because Ida and Morimura wanted to turn him into a clone of four two six. Morimura tells Megami not to talk to him so she can turn him into 426. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... So Tamau puts them together. Tamau puts... The, Tamau creates the new personality to fix his old bullshit, puts them together, tells him that she can live with him if she treats him like his new individual, because I hope she... I guess she doesn't want his brain to fall apart. A magic cat tells her that she can fix his memories. Yes. He does love her. He both prior loved her, is attracted to her in the moment, and then gets brainwashed. Like, you want to talk about the fucking consenty shit? Let's talk about the fact that we're implanting memories in characters. That's really fucked up. Okay? <laughs> that's that's way worse than any of this shit when you're fucking with people's brains by giving them new, more old memories. You see? Okay? And she cooks... And she's the hottest character in the cast. Oh, fuck off, you fucking piece of shit. You spent all your time just to get to that. Listen, um, no. No, but I knew it was going to be the last thing I said. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, uh, the, way, the, way I'm, I'm, the way I'm looking at it is when you're playing as her and you're going forward with the I, knowledge. I, up, I have to take a, a second. I'm going to piss myself. Okay, all right. I, we got to hold this thought.
Okay. Uh, so all right. you're getting in the way of true love. All right. So first of all, first of all, uh, we 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 literally cannot sit on the point because we do have to fucking get moving forward to this. But here's what I'm saying. When I'm looking to to look at the Megumi Yakushiji situation with uh with the goalposts firmly planted where they are, the reasoning mm -hmm. behind the way I feel about her actions is coming from the perspective of how she's acting with what she knows. So mm -hmm. she's still a kid, first of all. So she's making 16-year-old yes. decisions. But she uh -huh. is not aware of all of the final circumstances that will make these actions make sense. She is I mean, simply moving forward because Juro, right? And there is a point where it's like, you what you know of the situation is new personality and what you know of the situation is not the other things you mentioned but she has to push past what juro is actually asking her to do to get at the the inner izumi and yeah. that resistance reads uncomfortable to me so um juro is not by the end of the story Jiro is not Jiro Izumi he is still Jiro Karabe that mm -hmm. is a synthesis personality I think his final and speech is like I'm not that guy anymore I think he literally so says that, that those words yeah it's one of the first speeches actually because the order is weird and it's in like the second battle where Me Megumi meets him on the field mm -hmm. and uh, somebody calls him Jiro Izumi he goes no I'm not Jiro Izumi I'm Jiro mm -hmm. Karabe mm -hmm. and Jiro Karabe the character is the one who's like Hey Megumi, I love you and shit, yada yada. But like her boy gets amnesia, mm -hmm. right? Gets a new personality. The person who built that personality says, Hey, you're good for him. Go live in my house. He's like, bitch, get out of here. You freak me out. No, she's you're, like, you're... I live here. <laughs> I've asked to be it's here. And I and also yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. No, you're retreading the points, and it's the same thing. All, but it, it uh, like I said, it, it's coming from the point of view of not having the command dot com overview of the entire situation, just mm -hmm. acting the way she is. I think that if she were not sixteen, if you were talking about someone who was much more um, older and later in their life and handled relationships, they would perhaps in this situation treat it like someone who was like, okay, I have to go at their pace. I still love them. They might not love me anymore. I have to go at their pace. And that, I think, would be a move where you're like, all right, I would like to be your friend. And I'd like to help you come back to who you were. But I think you have to respect where and how this shapes up. If they end up never coming back to who they were, if it never works out, then you're still being forceful in a place that's not respectful of who they are at the moment. So you can hope for the best while still supporting them trying to get it back to that situation but you gotta pump the brakes a little bit to get there and that but that's you know, someone brakes, way older talking, than 16 would 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 make that you're decision talking about somebody running around shooting people at the whims of a cat Ex exactly right? <laughs> but that's but that's like now that we're like you if you're pump if you're hitting the brakes and saying stop let's zoom in on this relationship this is the we're getting to this granular level that's my that's my call on it right okay woolly yes this 16 year old high school student who had her entire planet exploded in front of her and i saved said this, who, totally like, said she's 16 why would she make that decision of course not i'm there's no way to expect that she would she's young and like totally going falling in love they all are in fact we i was going to talk about in a second um love at first sight iori you know so it totally makes no sense to expect her to, to act that way I mean, that's not i'm saying that someone that did have more um experience in life would perhaps approach that situation in that way that i'm just putting that i'm yeah, just putting that I, out there i guess but, but that's, that's not we're talking about the no. the character that we're talking about we're, lo we're looking at a person who will cook for her man every day even though he says get away from me you're when ugly you have, when you, you know have I mean. a when you have someone who uh um like 
has us an an an, uh, an accident and has amnesia and then has to like recuperate who their personality like you don't fucking leave them like an asshole that's you're a piece of shit um but you, you certainly do take it at their pace and so i think that like that is kind well, of just the tough because because most people who lose their memories don't get fully formed new personalities <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah yeah that's a little but, more but, but you but you you get you get what i'm what i'm getting at you know um yeah so when you um, look at when you look at what's happening across the street uh uh, uh with um uh what you call it with shoe where he's just like hey got to put on a fucking show for yuki chan okay i have to, <laughs> that that's it's, the only thing i want to talk about with shoe is that one line it's the only thing I want to talk about, okay. but, but but like because bef- it's the it's holy shit. It's People the worst are saying thing get Punch Mom on. Uh, Punch Mom agrees with me. We've had this discussion. You can see her. You can see her opinion when we get to the conclusion in the final episode. And he pays she her joins over for here the last seeing, session. And what's her fucking face as the true love that they always are? Yeah, of the, course. Like this, <laughs> this, this, yes. this is gonna split every which way. Punch this Mom and I is, both looked at that and both came, like we're like whoa. Please respect the person more than that. Anyway, shoe. Here, here, here's the way that I, I see it in a legitimate, like, like not hyperbolizing way. Um, Megami is a dumb 16-year-old and totally does not respect Shuro's, bound, uh, Juro's boundaries. You're right. She doesn't. She pushes super hard because her ex-boyfriend is literally right there, but it's a different person, and it's a whole fucking thing, and also magic cats, Cat. right? Gun. It's established. What is established is that she is desperately in for real love with this person. It's not like a passing infatuation because we get to see a time skip later that no, that was a real, real, for real thing. Kill the witches. But also that this is a person (laughs) who is so in love with her boyfriend Mm -hmm. that on the flimsiest justification will go out and shoot people Without knowing what the gun even does. Yeah, that's not okay. <laughs> right? That's right? not no. okay. You're not going to hear me say that <laughs> Megumi Yakuchiji is the smartest or best person. Because she's an idiot and she's reckless. And sure, her actions did technically save the world, but she didn't know that at the time. What I am saying is that that is evidence of true love. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it's evidence of um, possibly having the type of relationship where she might end your life if things don't work out the way she has them in her head. No, it's more likely that she'll end many other people's lives. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Like, there's a lot of psycho killers out there. Fair. I would not not argue that a girl that kills the bully at my school because he's hassling me that bitch loves me a lot yandere sure sure oh, she, she's a little she's a little calmer she's, she's meek, more like irresponsible but there's inner yandere to be unlocked yeah yeah so um yeah so that 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 level of just like it doesn't matter the world like all of it for him like anyway so uh that that fucking i put my hands up on that and i wasn't the only one and and reggie never even made any of those points he was just like but look at the food she cooked for him and that was the That's end of his point sign of love. literally a just make the food of love. Look how much work she put into it yeah totally all right, you know, moving on. It's not like I know uh, people who have cooked meals for people and then went and abused the fuck out of them immediately after cooking those meals. Of course that happens, Wooly, but she doesn't do that, does she? Certainly not the certainly not the 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 the, the hill to die on being food. <laughs> but anyway, that, no, that comparison only works if then she goes and abuses Jero. She doesn't. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying everything on the line, on the opposite end. But this dinner, though, and you're like, all right, it's a all right, Reggie. A puzzle. 
not the whole thing. To Reggie, it was the whole thing. I don't know. Uh, but moving yes, on it, to, but but, but it does know. come down to, like, like you said, that that uh, respecting of Juro, uh, Kurabe in that moment based on what she knows and like the and the willingness to you know, shoe like like. If Tamau didn't exist, I would I'd be more on your team. But she she does like get explicit permission from like the guardian and the, stuff the like that. The universe, the universe, the the people that know more about the situation want to facilitate that. The universe conspired for their true love because it was fate. You know what's not fate? Better put a show on for Yuki Chan. That is <laughs> the cringiest line read that should I... they should have done. Take. They should have done another fucking take. It's so bad. It changes how I feel about the character. I like Shu Amaguchi. I like his casual laissez faire attitude. I like the fact that his shoes and shirt are untucked. I like his hair and his very smooth talking ways. I yeah. overall respect, especially when I saw him respond to being what he thought was asked out by someone else on the roof and he goes to megumi oh hey sorry uh i didn't think you felt that way um not to lead you on or anything right. you know and he mm -hmm. he lets her down in a very nice reasonable manner shu amaguchi Absolutely. is chill he does not understand the concept of not interested but there is an archetype of character from yesteryear that is like that, that knows that, hey, the way to get grandma is, well, you know, he wore me down. A hundred times. He times. wore me down. And eventually I gave in and, well, you learn to love. You learn to love. You get married first and then you learn to fall in love. You know? And I'm just like, dude, she actively tells you stop she doesn't just say no she says no a couple times and around the fourth time she says stop it and he doesn't stop it <laughs> i have nothing else and i like him but fuck dude come on all right i'm noticing it i'm noticing a trend with this with this japanese video game that deals with romance. <laughs> hey, guess what? Are you, are hey, you noticing what? a trend? Hey, guess what? Yeah. They get together in the end, so it all works out great. So I, what I think that my favorite part is that, like, that one is not true love because Shu comes out so fucked up that 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 relationship seems like shit. Like, the, the little snippet that you he get on it... hitting on Ryoko. It looks like garbage. And on top of that... The weird, like, uh, the weird, like, through line of, like, the way their past lives went with this one, like, Yuki, Yuki's, like, only defining character trait in 2188 is that she's divorced. Sure. Sure. We don't. So, like, it looks like they're going yeah. towards, like, oh, they're going to get divorced for sure. Um, we don't know anything about, like, Goto and Ryoko's dating, but they had a weird mm -hmm. relationship that then ended. It also, and it's not even like for sure if anything happens there. At, it at the got me the to realize that high school J Japan stories never have people with exes. People don't tend to break up. They either fall in love and that's the plot, credits roll, or they don't. Or they and, fucking die. Or, or they don't <laughs> and, and, and then die, exactly. But no one ever yeah. has a relationship that ends. And I'm like, in my high school, tons of relationships ended all the time. Well, um, Shinonone and Ida definitely had at least two relationships that ended. Yeah, well, so there's your next uh, unhealthy for obvious reasons. Uh, that was actually written to be unhealthy on purpose. There's no dissent between us and the author. Certainly like, not, but in the modern version of it, where his, his uh, response is, child, get away from me. Not mm. because child, but because wrong child. <laughs> and then, like, oh, let me smell your dick. My pills. Are my pills in your dick? Oh. Let me smell them. Oh. 
It's not. It's not. It's not. Child, get away from me! It's the the wrong one. You yeah, know. Wrong child. Well, um, he is supposed to be good, though, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that's all of them. It is all. Yeah, there you Natsuno go. Natsuno and, and Yura have a wholesome thing. They do. at the same time. That that one feels like extra, like, faded. Because it was one-sided it, until the end, you know? Yeah. She was just... Natsuno was just a bubbly girl, and Mira's yeah. like, in her shine and trying to, oh. you know, <laughs> do his best. I, we forgot one. We straight up forgot A and Iori. Oh, fucking hell. I did mention it earlier. You know why we... You know why we forgot it? Because he's we hot. We forgot it because that story is I'm a hot man. Oh man, that guy's hot. Are you cool? I'm pretty sure I just murdered some people. I'm actually oh, not cool so at all. I'm, I'm the furthest so thing from cool. That. There are ten people left, and one of them is an assassin by trade. I'm just a murderer. I have zero fucking empathy. I can turn it off and on when I need to to get the job done. Yeah. Cool, but you're hot though. Get on my bike. All right. Are you sure you killed my teacher? No. Maybe. It's okay. <laughs> but here but, but here's the thing, dude. Right? She's 16, which is yeah. why she gets the same hand wave that everyone gets. For making 16 year old decisions you know yeah she's making a fucking 16 year old decision i know people i went to high school with people that did the same thing he's hot he's a piece of shit and you know that he got physical with his last girlfriend what are you doing he's hot wait like, wait no 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 real people real people Oh, okay. You kind of you kind of spiraled Sorry. there a little. Hot guy, complete garbage, that like got physical with his ex, got more girls because he continued to be hot, despite okay. them but knowing what the happened. About, here's the thing about Aseki Kahara, right? He's really hot, and he has a motorcycle, and he might be a murderer. But <laughs> oh God, why does it, why do people why are people so? I'm all I'm saying is that like being hot on its own in an isolated instant. Any, it's Wait, I'm on, not on. saying he. You were asking, ask, asking. Okay, you were okay, saying okay. why does everyone just and you didn't finish your your question? Because this happened when I made the comparison on the last conversation, and then na again uh, now, when I bring up an analogy of a different person who did a different thing that is another mm -hmm. that is a bad thing in some way the point mm -hmm. is not to say that the action that was bad is being put on this fictional character we're discussing the point is just mm -hmm. to say that the trait that allows them to like get away with this or whatever we're discussing is something that can in circumstances be bad and like here's an example of that being the case so okay. love at first sight I with no substance to it is something that often doesn't necessarily work out we don't know but trusting just your the person being hot as the only metric is is a bad idea that's not much to okay. go on right i i agree with you however i will say that when you were talking about that it became very unclear as to who you were even talking okay about. i'm sorry i could have been more clear about it that's not that's not uh, yeah I, I the way i talk and think and try to get these things out while I'm saying them is might not be clear. I'll try to be more specific about any time I do that in the future. But um, literally, I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying, like, therefore, A. Sekigahara beat his ex. I'm saying that, like, the shallowness is not good. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, the no, end. That's it. it. Like, it's hilarious because, like, A loses his memory, and him losing his memory gives you the, the, gives uh, Fuyusaka the, the fucking benefit of the doubt to maybe he's a good guy. Because Morally he's gray. Hot. Morally gray. Right? Like, no, it, is, it is the actual fucking joke we've been making for like a year now. He's hot. Did he kill my teacher? Yeah. It turns out, no, actually. Um, uh, but you know yada yada but he's hot and he seems good 
special right? mention before we go to the single worst cop I have ever seen from someone who had the best first impression to being absolute trash garbage. Um, uh -huh. Actually, the cop in the Yakuza Zero is not much better. He's pretty fucking uh -huh. garbage too. But Mr. Stop and Search. Oni Onishi the Ogre is such a fucking scumbag. When you see him and you see the way he looks and the gray, and you go, "Oh man, look at this guy. He's been on the job forever. He's such a cool old guy. He's probably got a picture of his wife and kids in the wallet, and you know." That he's out here on the beat because everybody knows him and he probably is just a stand-up fucking pillar of his community. Maybe. I don't know. And then he shows up a couple times to harass the, the truants, as it were, of the story. And then the one time before the, the previous loop he's called into action, he shows up as fucking uh, um, the, the bully crew are trying to corner Iori and the girls and fucking jump them and he just lets it go. He like he's like, ah, hey you, what's going on over here? And then lets them fucking on about their business. And you're like, bitch, did you just not an hand. assault in prog stop an assault in progress? I'm gonna raise my hand here. One you're criticizing a 60-year-old Japanese man working as a police officer in 1985. You're not going to run into the morals that we want. Two, <laughs> yeah, he's like an asshole. Yeah, he's a, he's an asshole. Three, I don't really know why you're complaining so much because the person you're complaining about isn't a real person. That's not going to work in the conversation. That's not gonna work. If we're just gonna say in the end they weren't real, then we're then let's just tap out of every discussion of every anyone, including Miwako, which is fucking crazy no, because Miwako I, is wholesome no, and needs to be protected. I'm not gonna say in the end they aren't real. I'm going to say in the end the people that aren't real aren't real, and I'm because gonna they're say, not real people. Pun intended. That's a cop out. Fuck you. <laughs> that's a bullshit answer they're not real we don't need to fuck off they're, they did things in the story we're talking about them oh yeah but like who are you angry at the fucking computer the character in the fictional video game 13 sentinels aegis rim of onishi uh -huh. the ogre let the fucking dudes go and all i can think of is off camera they went to go assault some other npc girl Because he just let him run. Anyway. You mean, you know, another NPC girl who's not a real person? That doesn't merit the discussion anything. It does. How mad do you get when a GTA 5 pedestrian runs over another in their car? You know what, dude? I'm just going to leave this one to the air because... I don't. I clear. I'm not going to get any further conversation about it. That you that is interesting from you if you don't want to talk about NPCs like that. And I think it should be pretty clear that like, th yes, they're not real in the finality of the story. But to use that as a means of saying therefore nothing they do should be discussed or matters is a shitty cop out. I don't think they should be discussed. Like, they're not real. They're fucking okay. chairs that walk around and talk. All right. I, I'm not going to get any further with you in this, so I'm leaving it alone. You're fucking... That, that's a silly-ass take on it. That's ridiculous. I was going to talk about Miwako next, but why bother? Miwako's great. I like her. The only She's reason cool. Miwako matters is because she matters to the characters. And they're willing to do some weird fucking ghost-in-the-machine bullshit to manufacture a real person out of that AI. Have you ever cried watching a movie? Yeah. Why? They're not real. Okay. 
Do I think I live in the movie? No, but we're having a discussion on a podcast. And I'm talking about Onishi being a shit cop who let a bad guy go in the fictional context of the video game, son. Yeah, and <laughs> like, I said, yeah, he's an who, asshole and his his fucking basis is probably an asshole. You saying your the, first point about him being a cop from the 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 eighties in Japan they, is totally a real point that I'm like, yeah, fair enough. Let's go. And then the second one being, therefore, why even bother NPCs? Like, well, well then why are we doing any of this? You know? Well, anyway. The, the one thing about the story that I actually genuinely don't understand that ties into this is what does it matter that they evacuated all the fake people? Because then the kids would not think people were dying. Which, at the time, I remember being really concerned by because it was like oh yeah now that we look and we see um the way mori 88 baby mora is acting she goes this is so stupid Ugh. anyway attention all sentinel pilots i've evacuated the city and she's like thinking this is dumb because i should just be able to loop and this deal with goto is dumb but goto makes the most compelling fucking st argument to her and and ultimately says you'll win anyway just let us prove our point so she goes fine and then she does that and then that effectively makes them think that there's not casualties while they're defending and fighting for their lives on that note holy shit goto is such a badass i can't believe how fucking cool he is he is the type of character that you should hate I because he's your favorite character he's not my favorite at all oh he's not even in my top 3 Oh, okay. The way you talk so stop. about him seems like a lot more than no, the rest. No, don't put words in my mouth. But he is super cool when you play his story because mm -hmm. you expect him to be a I'm tucking my glasses up at you kind of person. And I'm going to be like um, the, the typical like holier than thou talking down to how stupid everyone is kind of guy. But then it turns out that like he actually has a... Uh, a full understanding of like okay no i i want to make a bargain with you i know that you killed Mor Mor uh, morimura i know that you did these things my whole thing is cornering you and then going mm -hmm. at the end of the day so what are you gonna let me walk away what are we doing here and his whole thing is just like no let us prove a point i'll let you win anyway if we fail do what you gotta do but mm -hmm. let's work let us fight you know I was so fucking like, man, you sold me, dude. He was great. I didn't expect this storyline to be arguing with like a six-year-old. <laughs> For the whole thing. Like, that, that was the, it's like, the most the last interesting thing I argument. I will say uh, you did have like a value add to Goto that I didn't have in that you had mini Goto with an actual fucking for real ass notebook sitting next to you. <laughs> like, uh, 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 Reggie with the notes. Yeah. Yeah, like he that, did have the notes a, on it. And he does say the line, these world-changing revelations don't phase me anymore. And I was like, man, that's talking right through the fourth wall, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, Goto, in the end, I'm, like, really impressed by that character as someone who didn't turn out to be what the first impression of the archetype trope would have been, you know? Um Ah, uh, shit. Uh, there was one thing I was holding on to in my brain. Uh, I think it's gone. Oh, yes, I remember. You know what's unfair? The fact that people from 1945 who don't really know what's going on, and literally, I think at one point, Hijiyama's on his knees almost crying, going, please, can someone tell me what's happening? I don't get it. Have to get out of their pods alongside people from... 2100 and they both have to lead society forward together the people from the 40s are not prepared for any of this shit and they have two years to get adjusted before they have well, to lead humanity that sucks luckily, luckily Mura's smart luckily but... Hijiyama is gonna suffer and it sucks yeah Hijiyama has like a, gonna have a real rough acclimation process you know mura took a while to get used to the swing of things too though he's smart but it was rough you know like yeah. 
the fact that people from earlier dates are getting out and now have to take a, get accustomed to the world in two years is that's so unfair man and i know why it fair, happened but oh the, the the world they live in like actually live in is so far beyond mm -hmm. and weird and alien compared to all of their time periods yeah that it's like the the adjustment from the most modern person to the world is a much bigger jump than the jump between the time periods <laughs> because well, they're, it's they're exponential in, in real life, right? So if you think about it, like the idea of a nano machine to someone from the 2100s is like, oh yeah, those things, uh huh. Whereas yeah, okay, to some, you know, to someone from um, like 85, it's like, oh, those things from sci-fi movies, that's crazy, wow. To 45, somebody, it's like uh, somebody just made a really good point. What are you which talking was about? People, people in the in the 2100s are used to like future shit but like we don't know how fucking ghetto their farming and living situation is yeah it could be looper it, it could be horrible but also futuristic but i just mean yeah. mental preparedness for the world you're about to get is like the technology is in 20 is advanced to 2188 that's what this world is going to be and mm -hmm. we now have to lead them and it is unfair to those who came from too far back in the past it just sucks because those nano machines yeah. are still there and they're still capable of making babies you know now to be fair the the clones of the people in the 40s and 80s by that metric did decide to send their clones to those periods they chose those periods they on did. purpose and thankfully um the, Tamau explains in that in that thing that they had enough genetic data to create a diverse system of people, flora and fauna, because if it was mm -hmm. just those kids making babies over and over, we would run into the yeah, fucking Noah what... incest problem problem real quick. Yeah. Also, real they quick. would they'd all be Japanese. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, for a while, anyway. Um, the final scene, the final final scene. It's it's Infinite. it's perfect. All your all your fan fictions are canon. This is happening forever. That's not how, that's not how I interpreted it. Uh, I interpreted it as it's initially like dire that this disaster is propagating like everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Like that's horrific. But at the same time, it's very hopeful that even if the people that we spent time on. Mm -hmm. fuck up and destroy themselves Humanity they're still on. like hundreds if not m thousands if not millions of yeah. possibilities for real success but the horror of that same story is the guaranteed successes that like might literally encounter each other as parallel realities if they oh, develop that in the crazy? same way Oh, and cool. And humanity as the virus expanding through the galaxy. It's a literal brat overflow. Yeah, that's cool. I like it, it is an overflow of brats expanding infinitely yeah. as re as they replicate into the into everything. But only the really cool batches get out of the pod. Yes, but some of those batches <laughs> will get out billions of years before others. Ah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. You're going to fight. Spacefaring planet group will eventually fly by a planet that has a dead system of fucking babies on it that were that mm -hmm. ran out of batteries after 5,000 mm -hmm. years and go, oh, well, that one didn't work. And that's going to be dark. Yeah. Well, yeah. But hey, some of them will succeed. Some of them, in, in, infinite possibilities it, in infinite it, realities. It, it's also tough because you... Um, Our planets, rather. You, you, you start from the darkest possible start, which is everyone is dead. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody. Yep. It's all gone. So, like, literally anything is an improvement on that. Yeah, it's all uphill from here, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> That's the optimistic look on it. The problem is, is that like there's a possibility of going uphill way too far into oh god, yeah. oh no, fuck, oh shit, and now we have again like parallel 
rate like like it, people uh, that are that are like light years away from each other you know god i hope they don't meet um the thing that surprised me the most about the ending wasn't like a plot thing it was its tone the game's really dark mm -hmm. like consistently dark and it only gets more dire the more it goes on right like the for me the revelation that most of the people were ai and that it was actually down to like 15 16 real humans was like terrifying because like like that's it that's literally all that there is that holy shit like the stakes as it went down the stakes got higher for me but then when we get to the end 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 it's like they did something i didn't think they'd be able to do which is the ending is really positive it's astonishingly positive no one died not even the like, fakes. Not even the fakes. Mm -hmm. Even people who died in some cases came straight back to life. Mm -hmm. Ido was given and, a punishment that he had to atone for by the by who he loves. Which yeah. in the end, Inaba loves him anyway, and he still gets his happy ending once he atones yeah. for it. Everybody, literally everyone got a happy ending. And the visual is Adam and Eve waltzing into the Garden of Eden. Yeah, and like, I think the, th the part that got me wasn't that it was so happy, is that it managed to justify it just enough that I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll allow it. Because like often like if berserk ended with like and everyone got married and 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 guts and Casca had a bunch of kids and yeah. they made us a heir out of griffith's skeleton and then griff and guts became the king and it was all happily forever after i will be like shut up yeah except Bullshit. except uh-oh can go for no reason <laughs> ogata's dad gets dropped in at the last second to be the one ultimate guy who is just nefarious for the sake of being nefarious. I don't give a fuck. I just want to live. Okay. And ends up being a major catalyst while also being the most inconsequential thing in the world. He's a, he's a secret antagonist that is in one scene in the entire game. And he was literally supposed to be apparently a bigger part of the plot that got cut. But uh, you can feel I think as he exists now, he is only there to give Morimura some some forgiveness so that mm -hmm. she can shoulder she, all so that the blame can be shouldered onto a, a non human entity that sits in a hard drive somewhere. I I I looked at it a little bit more thematically, where Ogata is like running the show, essentially, uh, but then he dies, obviously. And considering the, the death of humanity is concurrent with his death, he kind of feels like all the worst parts of Earth, like, following them. Because, like, his involvement and wanting to be an AI and all that crap... Kengo. ...are part of the reason... Yeah, Kengo. Yeah. ...are part of the reason that causes stuff on even the ship to deteriorate. That's And that's the thing, is, like... I give Mori eighty eight like the, the 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 benefit of her saying, like I only exist because of what is needed for these for this group of people in this new reality here. Whereas Kengo was like, I get to live forever, lol, you know. And you're like, yeah. yeah, that that's the fucking humanity right there that you 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 need to fucking watch out for, you know. So, um. Anyway, so yeah, it's it's shocking that we got a happy ending that I didn't think was like complete bullshit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if, you had if you had told me like halfway through the game that everyone survived happily ever after, mm -hmm. I'd be I'd fucking stare at you like you were an idiot. So uh, let's wrap it up. Who are your faves? My favorite characters. Yeah, uh, I asked. I answered this a couple times on Twitter. I can tell you who my favorite character to play in a fight is, and it's Ryoko Shinonome. Okay. Every day of the week. Okay. Um, my most hated character to play as in the story is Ryoko Shinonome. <laughs> okay. Because uh, of my pills, mm -hmm. 
The pill mechanic is really annoying. Mm -hmm. And her fucking story is the most, it's the widest in terms of timeline. And I, I had trouble figuring out who she thought she was right. at each branch. I will, but I said at the end, I felt really sorry for her with her um, ultimate fate before the final battle. Oh, it's, it's right? pretty depressing. It's yeah. fucking depressing, which is so, and then think about how perfectly that mirrors 88 Ryoko. Mm -hmm. the, the mirror yeah. of that super dark conclusion coming back in this version is the one instance of like, hey, you know what? It was like poetry. It did rhyme. <laughs> yeah. It did. You know? Um, People are bound by the destiny of whatever the the their 88 versions were. There are things and decisions and even grudges that Hijiyama and Ogata are going to have with each other simply because their 88 versions already did. And... Sonochino Sadome is real in 13 Sentinels universe. You you can't escape it or you can, but you're going to have a hard time fighting it, you know? If I had to pick I don't know who's my favorite. My second favorite character in a fight is Natsuno Minami and my favorite character in the game is Natsuno Minami. Okay. Her her travel through time as it were sees what I believe to be the single biggest bomb drop, which is time travel isn't real, this isn't Earth. All right. Uh, folks, let's try this again. There are things that the people in 88 do that mirror into their versions in the future. And in some cases, it's relationships. In other cases, it's personality decisions that are very rash that end up leading to them being the same types, as it were. Um, but those connections were deliberately drawn as to like why, for example, uh, um, 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 Megumi would be so obsessed with Juro. It's because he literally saved her life as a child in this version. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to carry forward with that strength, but it was done so intentionally. So there are things you know, in the, the story the, the, that deliberately echo forward. Out. Not every character like has that. that. Obviously, baby Megumi didn't go shooting everybody. Not everything you has know. that. I'm just saying that some instances of the 88 echo forward into the... All right, go ahead. Uh, they actually go directly into that where, like, when Shu, like, starts arguing with Ida, like, and Ida is smart enough to realize that they are essentially the same person split down the middle yes. based on their experience. That was great. And the version of him that fucks up Ryoko is the womanizing, manipulative piece of shit that is willing yeah. to go through whatever it takes and do anything to get his way, that also is going to put on a show for Ryoko-chan until I won't yeah. get the fuck away from me. And Chu <laughs> is the romantic idealist. Right down the middle. The worst of both worlds. Yeah, yeah that's really good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Natsuno's, like, her bubbliness in the, in the face of, like, the game's fucking depressing a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And her character is like, it's so much more lighthearted than the rest of them for a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And she's hopping all over and she's finding out shit. She's going on adventures. I absolutely loved her part of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, and Missile Ring fucking kicks ass. Yeah. I separate battle from, from character. I was well, asking that's why, just... that's why I am separating yeah. it. Yeah. Battle in battle, you need Ryoko. Ryoko. You know, you need you, you need that fucking twin um, yeah. um, um, thing. But uh, character wise, so that bubbliness, I agree. For me, it was Miwako. I thought Miwako's no, like no, not allowed. Anyway, I thought okay, Miwako's now. yes, um, and and her and the fact that she's also boy crazy was just like holy fuck, girl chill <laughs> but it was fun i i like i like the facets of her that are like you know um cutesy and 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 just nervous and you know just a nice wholesome girl but also just like super boy crazy you know she's um boy crazy. huh she's ridiculously boy crazy yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. absurd so 16 you know like, uh, um like there's a, there a the bit in oh god whose story is it it's Ryoko's, where you're like, I gotta get away from Goto. Yes, hey, call Ryoko. an interference. 
Goto's yes. over here. You can smell his dick. Ah, I can run away. She jumps in like a striker and just keeps him occupied. <laughs> um, for me, uh, Ogata, um, Nenji is just a stand-up dude. He, I like a lot of what he. Um, I like, I like his the, the way he approaches problems. I like the fact that like he's like, look, man, I'm a brawler, right? I'm kind of an idiot, but I'm emotionally intelligent. You know, like he is uh, uh, just a, a, a character that I really liked that ended up like, I mean, at first, you, you see the pompadour and you go, ha ha, you make your, um, your fucking Josuke joke or whatever. But throwing that in the garbage, like he's someone that's really emotionally intelligent. And I remember like the way he talks to Tony. Very in, similar archetype. That joke is on point. <laughs> but then you, you see the, um, the way he talks to Tommy, uh, in the in the groundhog's day right the final version of it where he's just like hey i know what's up and i'm sorry that this is gonna I, like i know i like i'm sorry that I, i've got to leave you for a second but i care a lot about you do you trust me i've got to go over there and take care of something and she just kind of goes oh oh yeah sure you know and you're just and it's like yes that's it man you know and then later when you're having your final moment where he's like to the final battle and he like just has that like very not shy open moment of like yo i love you i'm doing this to protect you mm -hmm. with the whole thing he says it with his chest you know and i'm like that guy rules like i fucking love the fact that like he he he's treading enough water to keep up with what's happening plot wise but mm -hmm. mostly like it's his emotional intelligence that like catapults him forward and then he's like i'm gonna try to say a cool line here and everyone's like you fucking nerd shut up he's like oh terrible well okay you know um yeah so he was uh he was my, my boy and then in the fighting as well i ended up just beefing him to the infinite limiters off oh now i'm really mad you know i don't give a shit about my limits like that was great uh he was yeah he was super fucking useful on the battlefield um and um yuki as i think the funniest thing is that your favorite relationship the only one you didn't we didn't actually talk about uh, uh fucking tomi and, and Enji at all oh okay like, i talked uh, about them a lot in my in my in my playthrough so it just kinda, uh, it's fine it's yeah. like the like they hate each other's guts and the only reason they got together is because they were forced to by fate <laughs> Like you're the, the you're like the only relationship, <laughs> the only relationship you didn't complain about. Oh my god, they are all over. Each other. They are your classic antagonistic couple that teases each other, but has a solid thing underneath that that I felt was pretty I have, good. I have, I have experience with this 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 type. But and it's just it's and the fact that, that the like, the fact that they had the teasing and the counter teasing. And the like, oh, someone cares about me. Shut up. Uh -huh. Go fall in a ditch. Like, you know, like yeah. that type of thing was legitimately fun to see. I love it. You fucking you but love to see it. But the only reason they worked through that is because they were forced into a life or death situation. <laughs> like if they had to just like hang out, they would have just been like, whatever, bitch. You're ugly and your pigtails smell like fart. Except that like... She says, even in the loop before, that she likes the tough guy type, which is why Shu becomes Shu, you know? Yeah. Like, Ida starts trying to basically turn himself into the, the bad boy, but the actual truth of what she likes is Ogata. So, like, you know, that part was in there as already. And, and, dare I say, while, while we're throwing out uh, these... Uh, you know, meaningless fucking points. As far as fast forwarding to the future version goes, Ogata wins, in my opinion. Because uh Tomi plus time is fucking is still blonde. Choice. <laughs> to Ogata wins that one. That was that was fucking great. Um you get that pop off every time you see the older version of characters. I loved it. It was really great. Uh, Juro in particular was like, yo, look at that action hero main character, you know? Um, but when when they showed you Tomi late 
future told me, I was like, wow, okay, she's fucking striking. So, good on Ogata. Good dude. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the character I liked. Uh, Yuki was very cool. Pointed out, people point out that, um, Josuke's voice actor actually does straight up voice Ogata. Oh my god, I didn't even fucking catch that. And the, uh, one That's of the magical girls, girl from Madoka with the gun, is the yeah. one who voices Megami. These dub okay. choices were on purpose. The, um, these, these were absolutely on purpose. Uh, Yuki, we didn't really talk much about, but I like Yuki as well. She's a cool Skeban type, tough girl. So she, you know, just on the archetype of being the tough girl with the, with the sl Slav squat, like, she checks, yeah. she checks a lot of cool, cool girl boxes that I find pretty well, dope. The game yet? Was the last time I saw Laura, I should go ask Laura Post uh, if mm -hmm. she beat the game yet. The last time I talked to her, she had recorded all of Yuki's lines, and I'm like, "Do you know what's happening in this game?" She's like, "Not even a little." Yeah, because she so, only, th think about that. Now that we've beaten the whole game, she only knows Yuki's lines. She's Ryuko from Kill a Kill. So oh, is that she? Fucking oh, yeah. again, perfectly lines up. Um, yeah. yeah, so I liked her a lot, uh, she was cool, the fact that she's Minami's mom is like the weirdest thing, but, um, uh, it ends up, it ends up, you know, playing out in this interesting, like, fucking kind of weird way of like, yeah, whatever, you, you can't control what your clone is gonna become, you know, um, but I liked her, I, 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 in the end, I, um, I like that you have to ditch Tamau, you know, at a, like, who's like, immediately well, sus following you around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I uh, if I had to pick like the top 3 it would be it would be uh, Natsuno, definitely. It would have been Megumi because I think her I think I can identify with her story uh not it not what she does but like the desire I'm going to help my loved one but it just it goes off the rails so fast. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Like it's 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 the it's the story I least expected to be having in Thirteen Sentinels, which is the cat is telling me to shoot witches mm -hmm, with a gun. Mm -hmm. Like it's so it's wild, um, and huh, I'm trying. I actually really liked Tommy's story, like stuck mm -hmm. with the gang it's in good. the future. Like we're fucking stuck, guys. <laughs> Like, we're fucking shit. And also, like, this is what the dead world would look like, right? If we saved yeah. the world and got stuck here, it would be this. This is our survival mm -hmm. forever. Uh, Tomis was good. Um, yeah, to me, uh, Miwako, Nenji, um, and uh, Yuki are, again, like, they're up there. But uh, to throw on another, um, Hijiyama, for self-explanatory reasons... Is a great. I didn't like his story much at all. Oh, I, 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 I. No, I'm saying characters. Oh, character. Ah. Yeah, because some of them have not interesting arcs, but still are interesting characters, right? I, I I'd say, um, some are better than others, but Hijiyama uh, needs to be on my list of like some of my favorite characters in the, in the story. Um, he's he's a fun person to follow, and you know that like, no matter what or where he's interacting with the world his one track himbo point of view is uh predictable I, and, and funny but then also he's sharp at times when unexpected you know i i got real tired of him by the end of the game genuinely like he is very one track he is i want a yakisoba pawn dude i'm from the 40s what is this wow uh i'm totally not gay no for real no, and, I dug it. And I and I don't Stupid know what sexy is going Okino. on. Stupid sexy Okino. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, every time I played as, as Hijiyama, I was, like, annoyed that I wasn't playing as Okino. I, play, I really wish we could have. Yes, I agree. But uh, you're not even, not even with the whole Yakisoba Pawn Angel that you're fucking... Nah. With your... your, your Hijiyama is there. right. She is the best girl, but still. Man. Man, our thirst, our tastes are so terminal. It's it's unbelievable. Like you are guaranteed to love the girl I hate the most in like every 
time. Oh god, every it's time. so polar every opposite, dude. <laughs> huh. Oh, anyway. Anyway, no. And 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 um but I I, I not, not that doesn't necessarily like Asuka's cool when she's cool. She's just fucking She's just fucked, but who isn't? But I like it when she does the roundhouse kick and says Erst, you know? Yeah, I don't, the Evangelion argument is so done because now that I'm an adult, I'm like, man, I don't want a piece of any of that. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want nothing to do with any of them, man. Like, get get right. me out here. All get right. me the fuck 